Just like with every season, Season of the Splicer is implementing new seasonal weapons into their seasonal activity. That's a lot of seasonal. This time around, these weapons come in the form of Fallen Splicer themed guns, and in today's video we're going to be covering every single one of these, going over how to get them, what their god rolls are, as well as ranking them from best to worst. Before we jump into the video though, I just want to let you all know that my G Fuel code is 30% off for the next few days on the website. As you guys know, we donate all proceeds made with my code, code NUT by the way, to St. Jude Children's Hospital, and G Fuel is and probably always will be the sponsor of this channel. So if you guys guys like energy drinks that taste delicious while also having your money go towards a good cause use code not at checkout and maybe tweet me your orders on twitter but without further ado let's jump into the video so first things first how do you get these weapons well seeing as they all come from the same activity this should be pretty straightforward the activity in question that these weapons drop at is called override and it can be found in the helm's ui screen use the gauntlet given to you by the servitor in the helm at the beginning of the season to craft key codes which are made with ether that you get from just killing enemies jump into override and use these key codes on chests at the end to have your chance at a weapon drop. But your grind doesn't have to be so RNG based as you also get decrypted data from these chests which you can also use to focus umbrals at the helm to specifically target farm what you like. So if you're playing override and you're trying to get the grenade launcher and you keep getting the pulse rifle, you can instead use the decrypted data that you get from those chests whenever you don't get what you want and then put that decrypted data into the umbral engrams to allow you to focus farm said grenade launcher. Speaking of grenade launcher, let's go ahead and start off our list with the number one spot, the Ignition Code Kinetic Grenade Launcher. This weapon right here functions very similarly to Salvager Salvo in the sense that you can shoot and hold down the trigger and then release said trigger to explode the grenade or have it explode whenever it hits on impact. But this weapon right here brings two things to the table that make it unique. The first of which is the fact that, well, it's kinetic. It's practically a kinetic Salvager Salvo. The problem with the Salvo is that this weapon always took up your energy slot, meaning that you couldn't use any other energy weapons if you wanted to if you were trying to go for a good grenade launcher build. However, with Ignition Code, you'll be able to use this bad boy in the kinetic slot, allowing you to use any kind of energy primary under the sun that you would like to use. The other thing that this weapon brings to the table is the perk Slide Shot. This is one of, if not the only grenade launcher in the game of this archetype that has Slide Shot as a perk option. I'm going to show you guys some gameplay in the background of just how nutty this thing is with slide shot and as you can see the dps potential with this weapon is off the charts plus it's extremely fun to use shoot slide shoot slide shoot slide either use this for ad clear or use this on a boss and you are getting grenades off left and right using this thing it's absolutely ridiculous let's go ahead and go over all of the perks that you can get on this thing first up we have the grenades there's only two that you would ever want and that's blinding nades and a spike nades blinding nades is going to do exactly what it sounds like and it's really good for harder end content like day one raids and of course spike nades is going to give you extra damage on impact whenever you hit an enemy now for the first perk slot we have field prep slide shot and ambitious assassin field prep is going to give you more reserves as well as better reload when crouching slide shot we already covered an ambitious assassin is going to make this weapon feel a little bit closer to salvager salvo now in the second column we have a whole slew of perks first of which we have danger zone which is a completely new perk that says the blast radius of this weapon increases when surrounded by combatants so that's a really good one right there we also have thresh we have vorpal demolitionist and even some damage perks like one for all and frenzy so there's a lot going on with this grenade launcher let's go ahead and talk about the first major god roll that you're going to want to go after I would suggest something like Spike Nades, as well as Slide Shot or Ambitious Assassin, followed up by Vorpal or Frenzy. This is going to be your damage dealing loadout of perks for this weapon. Me personally, I'm going for the Spike Nade, Slide Shot, and Vorpal roll, just to allow me to keep up a constant barrage of grenades, as well as dealing extra damage to boss type enemies. Definitely seems like a really fun one for me. The second god roll for this weapon is going to be Blinding Nades, Slide Shot, as well as Danger Zone. This is going to allow you to shoot your blinding nades and then slide right afterwards to get an immediate next one out as well as using something like danger zone which is going to allow you to blind enemies in a larger radius this weapon right here is going to have a ton of utility with this perk set now moving on over from the ignition code we have the chroma rush now this auto rifle kind of took me by surprise as i wasn't expecting it to be so damn good but it's a kinetic auto rifle that is 720 round per minute and it's basically the steel feather 
Peter from Season of the Dawn, but pretty much better in every single way. Let's go ahead and take a look at the perks. For the magazine, I'd personally go with something like Tactical Mag, and then for the first column, we have things like Feeding Frenzy and Subsistence, and for the second column, we have things like Kill Clip and Rampage. Now, I've been seeing a lot of people suggest this weapon for the Crucible, I'm personally not going to do that because I don't think this weapon is going to compete in the meta personally, so I'm just going to go over some PvE stuff here. As far as the PvE role goes for the Chroma Rush, I would probably say Tac Mag, or now that I'm thinking about it, probably Appended Mag because that just gives you, you know, pure magazine size, and then go with Subsistence and Rampage. Of course, Subsistence getting the buff that it got this season is very nice because that's not going to take away as much reserves when you use this weapon. Having something like Rampage is just going to allow you to keep this weapon up 24 7 shooting tons of bullets getting tons of kills and getting the damage boost from rampage all at the same time this weapon absolutely shreds in PvE, and getting a roll like that is going to be absolutely nasty. Now, moving on from there, we have the Grid Skipper Pulse Rifle, and this weapon right here, I really, really wanted it to be good in PvE, but unfortunately, it's not looking much like a PvE weapon. First off, it's an energy pulse rifle, and it does have the void element, so you might be able to get some use out of this in Grandmasters, but honestly, I would just keep using my last perdition, and it's also a rapid fire frame pulse, which if if the Time War Inspire taught you anything last season, rapid fire frames are pretty damn good in PvP. So taking a look at the PvP roles that we have, we could roll with something like High Cal to allow you to give your enemies, uh, you know, more of a flinch when you're shooting at them. For the first perk, this is something new called Tunnel Vision. It says reloading after defeating a target will increase your target acquisition and aim down sight speed for a short duration. So that's pretty good. We also have Moving Target and another new perk called Heating Up, which says final blows with this weapon will increase your accuracy and stability and also improve your vertical recoil which if you do have issues with recoil that'll definitely be a really good perk for the second slot we also have multi kill clip and snapshot sights and for me personally the role that i'm going after is probably going to be high cal tunnel vision and then multi kill clip this is going to help me flinch my enemies it's also going to help me with target acquisition and aim down sight speed and multi kill clip is going to give me even more damage after i kill an enemy and reload this weapon right here is going to look pretty nasty in the pvp meta i just wish it had better perks to kind of incentivize it being usable in pve of course in the second slot you do have multi kill clip and frenzy but for the first slot you really don't have anything that's going to properly benefit you in pve so because you're kind of already wasting one of the major perks i can't really recommend this weapon for pve but it's definitely looking like a boss in pvp now moving on from there we have a weapon that does it both it's both really good in PvE and PvP, we have the Sojourner's Tail Energy Shotgun. Now, this weapon right here is a precision frame, so you kind of already know where this is going. It's a really good frame for both PvE and PvP, but what makes this weapon special, as always, is the perks. Let's take a look at the PvE perks here. For the first magazine, you want to go with something like Assault Mag. Of course, this is going to be able to give you uh, more rate of fire, and it's also going to give you a little bit of stability, but the rate of fire is always what you want. For the first column, we have the likes of Rapid Hit, Threat Detector, and Auto Loading Holster. And for the second slot, we have Frenzy, Dragonfly, and Surrounded. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and say this right now. I don't think this weapon is going to be the best for boss DPS. You already have really good weapons like the first in last out that pretty much already does it pretty damn well however this weapon comes with a very awesome perk that you don't really see on precision frames that i think basically separates this weapon from the pack and makes it very unique and extremely fun to use in pve of course i'm talking about dragonfly running a roll like assault mag auto loading holster and dragonfly with this weapon is so much fun i was very lucky to get my own dragonfly roll in game i ended up putting dragonfly spec on it and this thing is an absolute monster ad clearing machine it's not only good for the enemies that have small health bars but you can absolutely tank these guys that have big health bars while also killing any of the ads around them i definitely recommend taking advantage of the dragonfly roll now of course if you do want to get more of a traditional boss damage kind of roll you could go with auto loading holster or frenzy or rapid hit frenzy
frenzy with assault mag, something like that. You can also do threat detector and surround it if you want. There's definitely a lot of perks going on here. So there's honestly a lot of really good roles. Me personally though, I'm going the dragonfly route. Now, taking a look at PVP, I'm sure you guys could already tell. Accurized rounds, quick draw, and opening shot. It's the same reason why Blasphemer is so good because it's practically a chaperone without being exotic. This weapon right here is also practically a chaperone except in the energy slot as Blasphemer is in the kinetic slot. So you can use things like Steady Hand if you'd like or something like True Prophecy without needing to make a compromise because you're already having that kinetic slot taken up. Now, moving on from there, we have the Shattered Cypher Machine Gun. Now, this weapon right here is probably one of my least favorite archetypes. The Shattered Cypher is, of course, the rapid fire frame, meaning that it has 900 rounds per minute. However, even though I'm not really a fan of this archetype, I found that this weapon was pretty damn good in PvE. Taking a look at the perks, going with something like Extended Mag, Field Prep, or Auto Loading Holster, as well as Rampage, can definitely lead to this weapon absolutely slaying out in the PvE landscape. Now, because of its archetype, I cannot recommend this thing in PvP. It simply takes way too many bullets to actually kill an enemy, and you're also going to be wasting a lot of ammo as well, as you potentially miss or don't fully kill an enemy. So, I would keep this weapon to PvE specifically. Specifically, going with extended mag, auto loading rampage, you're looking at a pretty damn good machine gun. And last place, lastly here on the video, we have the farewell sidearm. Now, I have nice things to say about every single weapon that we just covered. I cannot say anything nice about the farewell sidearm because I just don't like it. If it's not a burst sidearm, I don't like to use it. However, we're gonna cover it in today's video because some of you guys out there might be some mad lads and actually use this thing. Now, it's a lightweight frame sidearm it's in the kinetic slot let's take a look at the perks firstly you could go with something like tac mag for the magazine in the first column you have the likes of rangefinder and subsistence in the second column you have the likes of frenzy and multi kill clip of course i went ahead and lined out which ones you kind of want to match up together because running subsistence and multi kill clip just doesn't make any sense so running rangefinder multi kill clip or subsistence frenzy you could get some pretty decent use out of this thing for pvp you could do something like accurized rounds for the extra range tunnel vision as well as rangefinder and then for the second slot you could go with something like multi kill clip for extra damage i just don't have that much to say about this weapon because i don't really like it but i figured i'd mention it because we're covering all the weapons and some of you guys might actually enjoy sidearms but guys that is it for this video that is all of the new season of the splicer seasonal fallen weapons i hope you guys did enjoy this video i hope you found it useful if you made it to this point in the video you mm, you I, ju I just i just want to 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 make love to you in a non-weird way, okay? If you can grasp that concept, I appreciate you. Watch time means a hell of a lot here on YouTube, and the fact that you watched all the way to this point makes me super warm, fuzzy, and everything inside, okay? I love you so much. Guys, this is going on for a little too long, so thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.